Screen actors, today you're going to learn to use a technique that is so powerful that once you begin to implement it in your work, you're going to become much more compelling on camera. I am talking about the power of the pause. I'm Louis DiBianco, and this is my channel, Screen Acting Success. This is where you come for the tips, the techniques, and the secrets that apply to screen acting that will help you as an on-camera actor to become much better at what you do and to start booking some serious work. Everything that I teach here, none of it is theory. This is stuff that I learned by working in front of the camera for more than 40 years and by teaching actors for as long as I have been an actor myself. And if it's your first time visiting the channel, definitely click subscribe and give the video a thumbs up. Stick around because toward the end, I am going to also give you a uh, link to another video that will take this technique and enrich it for you, uh, flesh it out even more than we're going to be covering it here. Okay, what is it about pausing when you're speaking a script, speaking your lines, that is so powerful and important. Remember, the camera is a visual medium. The stage is a verbal medium. And on camera, your words are not as important as your inner life and how that life is communicated through your eyes and through the different gestures that your face makes, your hands make, etc. So much is communicated powerfully through silence. Why do so many actors not really master this? It's fear. We're afraid to be quiet. We're afraid of that moment of silence. Many of us don't have the confidence yet to be able to start speaking some lines and then stop at a significant moment and allow a silence, a pause to be there. But once we're confident enough to do it, we overcome the fear, trust me, that pause is going to communicate so much and it's going to enrich your character and the story that you're telling. Why does the pause work that way? Well, when you pause, you're creating curiosity, tension, and a sense of mystery. The audience is viewing and they're wondering, what is that person going to say next? Or what are they going to do next? That draws people in. Remember this, a focused silence is a powerful magnetic energy. Literally, it's a powerful magnetic energy that draws people, forces them, compels them to watch you and not take their eyes off of you. So I'm not just going to talk about this today. I'm going to demonstrate it for you. I did a series in Montreal. Oh, it's probably about 20 years ago. And it was called Omerta, la loi de silence. Omerta the code of silence. Omerta, of course, is the code of silence in the world of the mob. And I had, I think I did about 10 episodes. I played a character named Carlo Lombardo, who was a New York mobster who had come up to Montreal to do business with the Montreal mob. And Carlo was a ruthless person um, thought nothing of killing people. And I actually had the lead, the, um, the main Montreal boss of the mob killed. Then I had a scene with his daughter where I'm confronting her about money that I believe she knows, money of mine, she knows where that money is and I want her to lead me to the money. 
She senses that I've killed her father. We've never discussed it. So there's that underlying tension between us. Now, at a significant point in the scene, these are the lines that we said to each other. She had said something to me in my response to her. Her, her name, by the way, the character's name is Gabrielle and um, played by a wonderful, wonderful Quebec actress. And she reminds me of a French Uma Thurman. So I'm speaking to Gabrielle and I say to her, in other words, Favara, who is another mobster, I should have told you that first. I say to her, in other words, Favara, I'm going to start that again, so I'll get it right. So you can do that in film. You can blow your lines and then just do another take. In other words, you gave Favara all that money and he stole it from me. She says, I don't know what he did with it, but I don't have it. My line, so he's lying to me? She goes, I guess, yes. I say, what should I do? Kill him? And her response is, is that a real question? And then I say to her, it was nice talking to you, Gabriella. So now I'm going to run through the lines without indicating which characters. And I'm not going to pause. In other words, you gave Favara all that money and he stole it from me. I don't know what he did with it but I don't have it. So he's lying to me? I guess, yes. What should I do? Kill him? Is that a real question? It was nice talking to you, Gabriella. Okay. We can make that work without any pauses whatsoever. But in a moment, I'm going to show you the scene. And I'm going to show you the pauses that I just relaxed and took. I relaxed into the scene and took the pauses. And then you decide what they add to the scene. In fact, I would love for you to leave your takeaways in a comment here in the description below um, this video. What do you see? What do you feel when I pause? And I think that you'll notice that the character suddenly becomes more dangerous. He becomes more <laughs> significant in terms of the damage that he could do. And overall, the scene becomes more compelling. Also, I didn't tell you that there are more lines before the scene completely ends. And I was working with a great director and I had an instinct. I said to him, rather than say these lines immediately after I say to her, it was nice talking to you, Gabriella. Let me take a long pause and then do something that will really put the fear of God into her. He allowed me to do it. He loved the result and it it remained in the episode, it certainly it remained in the scene and certainly in the episode. So you will get to see that portion of the scene, how it ends. And remember, that was not the way it was written. The long silences that I took toward the end, I put those in myself. And when I saw it in playback, I felt great because I said, wow. My instincts were right. That does work. In other words, you gave Favara all that money and he stole it from me. What the hell he did with it, I don't know. But I don't have it. So he's lying to me? I guess, yes. What should I do? Kill him. Is that a real question? It was nice talking to you, Gabriella. Oh, Gabriella. 
I don't believe a fucking word you just said. What? If all of this was true, you wouldn't tell me about it. Favada would kill you for less than that. I'm going to give you another chance to tell me the truth. You're going to find that if you've not explored this before, you're going to feel insecure. Sometimes you're going to go, maybe they'll think I forgot my not my next line. Not if you fill the moment. You see, you're acting with your emotions and how those emotions are communicated on your face and through your eyes. So that if I'm talking to somebody and I'm saying something to them and suddenly they say something back to me and I hear it and I go, I didn't need words to communicate what I communicated to that person just now. I really hope that this enriches your work, that it excites you, that it inspires you, and you'll start taking chances and exploring different ways to become an effective, powerful, compelling, interesting actor, storyteller on screen. I am going, like I said, I'm, at the end of this, you're going to see um, a link to another video. And that video is called Shut Up and Listen. And it's going to take a deeper dive into the subject of silence on camera. I'm also going to put a link in the description below to my latest online course called Self Taping Mastery. And as you know, self-taping is here to stay, and you should master it. Just check out the course, see if it's for you, and if it is, jump on board, and I will be honored to be your guide toward taking your work to a whole other level. Once again, share your comments in the uh, description below, and if you haven't already subscribed, do it now. Give the video a thumbs up. And as always, when you have a script in your hands, always say it. No, it's not the way. See, I just blew my line. Always feel it, say it, mean it, book it.